Good morning and welcome to Sunday School at Cedar Lane United Methodist Church. Since the beginning of June, we have been exploring the confident hope that we have in Jesus Christ. In June, Jesus taught us that we are freed from worry because we can count on our Heavenly Father to provide all we need for life and godliness. We have no reason to fear all the unexpected trials of life because the God of all creation has us in his hands. It is Jesus and faith in him that brings healing both to body and to soul. Our faith in him brings wholeness that the world cannot offer. It is as we walk with Jesus that our doubts about who he is ceases. We know that he is the son of God and that knowledge uh, offers, uh, and in that knowledge, we offer our thanks and our gratitude to our father. Now, the four lessons in July discussed how the gospel has the power to save everyone who believes that Jesus is God's Christ. They used Abraham as an example to show that it was faith that pleased God. God did not consider Abraham righteous because of what he did. It was because he believed God that he was counted righteous. The third lesson in July taught us that we have peace with God by our faith in Jesus. Jesus paid the price for the sin of all mankind, taking on himself our sin and dying on the cross to satisfy God's justice. The debt was paid and the possibility for new life through him was open to all. This month in August, we have learned that the very fact that we have faith assures us of things that the natural man can never see. We know with certainty that God will do what he has promised. We will see him and live with him. What is needed is patience and perseverance. We don't give up no matter what happens in life. We hold on to our faith in Jesus, and that faith overcomes. All of these lessons point us to our lesson today, which speaks of daily renewal, eternal glory, an eternal house, a heavenly dwelling built by God himself, and eternal life. Our verses today are from 2 Corinthians 4 verses 16 through chapter 5, verse 10. And I'm going to read that at one sitting, so we'll go from here. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, and what is unseen is eternal. Now we know that if, this, if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. 
We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. We sing the song, Trading Our Sorrows, by Daryl Evans, with some frequency on Sunday mornings. The words talk about exchanging our sorrows, our sickness, and our pain for the joy of the Lord. The chorus is particularly pertinent to our discussion today. I am oppressed, but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure that his joy is going to be my strength. Though sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes in the morning. Now, if you have your Bible, you can look back to verse 8 of Corinthians 4 and see where the songwriter got some of the words to that chorus. Here's the verse. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Paul knew a lot about every one of those words. In 2 Corinthians 11.25, he detailed some of the hardships that he experienced and endured. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in dangers from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, in danger from false believers. He knew a little something about what he was talking about. And yet, in verse 16 of our lesson, he says, we do not lose heart. What does he understand that we often miss? Why is the therefore at the beginning of this sentence? He tells the Corinthians in verse 14 that he knows that the one who raised Jesus from the dead will also raise all those who believe and present them with him in God's presence. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Like so many of us, having a few years on this body, I understand more of what Paul means when he talks about the outward man wasting away. But I also understand the re inward renewal of my own spirit as I walk with Jesus. I've never been shipwrecked or stoned like Paul, but like you, I have had my share of troubles. It is in walking through those troubles with Christ that we begin to get a di different perspective. We learn not to focus on the troubles themselves. Psalm 121 verses 1 and 2 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Sometimes I think the end of the ver first verse is more of a question than a statement. Where does my help come from? And verse 2 answers it, saying, my help comes from the Lord. The Lord that made the heaven and the earth. We strive to give the things that trouble us and worry us 
over to God asking for his help. And yes, I use the word strive. We all go back to pick up things and try to solve them ourselves. If we can preserve, excuse me, if we can persevere in faith, we will learn to see the truth of Romans 28, that all things work for the good of those that love God. The weight of the issues become lighter, and we won't see them as an endless tunnel because we know that we are in God's care and can trust him. So where do we start? How do we make that change? We fix our eyes, as Paul said, on the one who cannot be seen with the physical eye. We remind ourselves, and that's so often the truth, is we have to remind ourselves that we are the children of the Most High God who created heaven and earth and all that is in them. We give thanks for his care for us, for his Holy Spirit living inside of us, leading and guiding us day by day. We thank him for giving us his power to live our lives as his children through that same Holy Spirit. And we encourage one another as we live our lives. It takes all of us encouraging one another to stay true. For someone who does not believe in eternal life, what Paul says next is absolutely absurd. His attitude is, so what if the body dies? Think about it. So what if the body dies? Then he says, we have another body in heaven built by God himself. What a glorious body. We know that this world is temporary. And if we believe in Jesus, our hope is in him. All of our successes, all of our failures don't really matter all that much because our hope is in him. But if we don't have that hope, if we don't have that belief, then everything we have is here on earth. And every one of us know how quickly that can perish. For us as believers, is something that we look forward to. I know we don't want to leave the earth too quickly, but we do look forward to it and even long for it at times. We know all too well the weaknesses of being mortal. In heaven, there will be no crying, no tears. When we see Jesus, we will be like him. Imagine that. I don't know about you, but I long for this mortalness, this mortal body to be swallowed up by life. I look forward to that day. And we know that the promise is true because God has given us his Holy Spirit as that guarantee. Verse 9 is a summary of Paul's attitude towards this life. His goal was to please God, whether on earth as a mortal man or in his presence. His preference was to be at home with God. But he recognized that it was more profitable for the kingdom of God, i.e. us, for him to stay on earth. So he stayed as long as God allowed him. While we who believe in Jesus remain on earth, we live by faith, not by sight. Because of that faith, we have eternal life. Thank you for being with us today.